Hello, this is Akka Dubin, and today we are going to be reading about level negative 15, also known as If Man Is Still Alive. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And let's get right into this. If Man Is Still Alive. Survival Difficulty, Class 4. Unsafe, Unsecure, Medium Entity Count. Level negative 15 is an enigmatic level. Description. Level negative 15 is a vast rust-colored desert resembling that of Mars or Devon, an island. It is incredibly inhospitable, inhospitable due to intense heat and little to no water or food. Due to this, little information has been gathered on it. Despite this, this is probably the longest level I've read in a long time. When you first enter the level, it may seem as if it is empty. However, if you survive and travel long enough, you will begin to notice bright silver buildings and constructions created by the steel. Now, what the heck is the steel? These buildings are of bizarre architecture, and there is no conventional entrance into them. The steel inhabits them, however, they rarely leave these buildings. Other than the large, arch silver buildings, destroyed human structures can be found occasionally, with rare instances of supplies inside them. These buildings sometimes resemble schools, houses, or police stations. The weather in the level is mostly clear, however, it is occasionally broken up by dangerous dust storms, which will kill you if, if you cannot find shelter. In some areas, insulated pressure suits can be found, although they seem to be very outdated models compared to modern pressure er, er, and space suits. These suits are used by the, Yem the magnetic to preserve cold body temperatures when exploring, I have made it significantly easier to survive for long periods in this level. These suits can be found in buildings or occasionally worn by the corpses of other explorers. Well, that's a concerning. Basis, outposts, and communities. Level negative 15 is home to two known outposts, both created by the steel which have been found in this level. Home Alpha. It is supposedly the main outpost. It is. It has a factory for the creation of more steel through unknown means. The population is roughly 20. New grade steel are sent to level 2. Hope Beta. It is a support base made in the event Hope Alpha is destroyed. Base is populated by 13 members. Hope Beta members have been interviewed by I, I Meg various times. Members of Hope Beta have not proven hostile. Photograph in the, of insulated freshers used by the MEG while exploring this level. If you'll take a look. Very interesting. Interview 13. This interview was conducted between a Meg representative and a steel that was part of the Hope Beta outpost. They willingly interacted with him and answered some of the questions through telepathic communication. So they're interesting 90. That's good to know. Begin log. Interviewer is researcher Samuel H. Interviewee, an instance of NC90. When did your people end up at this level? We arrived shortly after the beginning. Our presence in this level was not intended. And why did you stay here? It did not support the life of any other creature other than the steel. So you stayed because there were no threats? Correct. However, the human species has found a way to persist despite believing it to be impossible. Ah, you mean our suits? Yes, they do keep us here longer than we thought possible. There was a time it was believed to be impossible for humans to survive in this state of existence at all. This arrests me in reference to the backgrounds as a whole. I mean, should be impossible, but then Kitty's house exists. Other than this interview, several trade 
AIDS and interactions with the steel have happened at Hope Beta. We hope to have settlements at this level in the next few years. Good luck. Entrances and exits. Level negative 14 is notoriously hard to exit. However, it has been proven possible. Various MEG operatives have managed to skip to the level in the past. Entrances. Level negative 15 can be entered through the various doors in level negative 1. Any door in level negative 1 that leads to level negative 15 will have a red insignia painted on it that resembles that of the reverence's logo. Logo. I cannot speak apparently. As you walk through the door, you will find the outside of it to resemble a shack. These shacks being the only way to go back into level negative 1. <sighs> Exits. The first person to ever escape this level on record was an explorer who managed to survive in this level for three days without an insulated suit before escaping it by entering a shack that appeared in the middle of a dust storm. This shack led back into level negative one. These shacks are the only known on exit back into level negative one. However, they are extremely rare, and you will likely only find one that you use to enter the level in the first place. Meaning that it is crucial to not forget its location when exploring in this level. Well, if you decide to do so at all. Anyway, here's NC90, also known as the Steel. NC90, NC number 90. Habitats, native to level negative 15. The Steel has spread to most populated at levels. And here we have a picture of a member of the seal performing music on level 11. Huh. That's a very cool look. Description. The seal are sentient machine-like creatures made from various hard metals. The species is noble for its telepathic and telekinetic abilities, the latter of which allows them to use their minds to levitate themselves and smaller objects. Steel scholars and other researchers have investigated the mechanism driving these powers. However, this research has not reached a definitive conclusion. Mm. Biology. There is a significant there is significant variation between individual seals. The species has no natural reproductive process. Steel tribes instead gather up various resources and combine them through their telepathic powers to create a new steel. In a process they call the startup. The steel do not age, but can be killed if subjected to enough damage. Individual steels vary in height, range from 4 to 8 feet, correlating with the number of different metals in each individual. Seals often change their appearance by adding or removing metal or by painting themselves different colors. The seal do not communicate verbally, instead Ed, they use telepathy or hand gestures and informal sign language. <clears throat> History Steel historians believe that the founding members of their communities within level negative 15 eventually perished due to various environmental hazards. This, along with a failure to preserve their history via written methods, resulted in it becoming lost to time. A large part of the Steel's modern culture is dedicated towards recovering this history and gathering more information surrounding their origins. Even now, they have no knowledge of how their species entered the backrooms, or where they came from beforehand. The few recent records that do exist indicate that at one point they met members of the Lost and befriended them quickly. As development within their level 15 summit came to a standstill, members of their species were then sent out into the wider backgrounds in order to continue with the to continue to trade with the Lost and to learn more about other species. It's thought that this eventually resulted in their widespread population. 
current theories about where the steel all come from vary. Some still stretch to believe they came from Mars, and others believe if they are long forgotten cousins of the extinct Machina a species. The SEAL are generally well-respected scholars and often work with the MEG and other groups in general. While they work towards the mutual goal of learning more about their own species, though individual SEALs have contributed to a wide range of research. Other members of the SEAL are notable for their contributions to the arts within the back rooms. The construction of certain human settlements often rely on steel aid, as their levitate abilities are extremely useful for lifting and carrying heavy resources. Music performed by the steel is, is considered its own subgenre. They can operate multiple instruments at once when using their telepathy, effectively turning a proficient steel musician into a one man band. <sighs> There's a mural created by the Church of the Revered depicting their creation. The Church of the Revered is a controversial steel religious sect with a small number of adherents. The faith posits they were created by an unknown, possibly human group, eons before any evidence of their existence. Reputable steel scholars sustain the revered and emphasize the religion conflicts with the steel's historical. All accounts of meaning the loss, as well as the lack of any human records regarding the seal's creation. Behaviors. In general, the seal are friendly and intelligent. Their upbringing and culture er, encourages familiarity with the backrooms and cooperation with other species and tends to emphasize qualities like analytical thinking and logic driven action. The Meg is committed to assisting the seal in rediscovering their history and research remains ongoing. Huh, no do's or don'ts it seems. However, I am curious about the loss and machina. So I guess we can read that and then get into the video. The Lost. Who are the Lost? Oh, I have to do a different voice. <clears throat> the Lost is a collective term referring to the multiple ancient cultures within the back rooms which have allied with each other over the years, building up a very large nation divided into discrete parties. Each faction of the Lost has different cultures, rules, and attitudes to other groups within the back rooms. The Lost creation stems from before the creation of many major, of many other major groups, and have seen parts of history of the backrooms that no other known surviving group has. During the time period at which the Lost first faction joined the backrooms, humankind had yet to grow much at all, and thus were able to grow to a larger size without the threat of other warring factions. The exact member. The exact number of members within the Lost is unclear due to the exclusive nature. However, maybe anywhere from 50 to over 500 individuals. Relations with the Lost should be held in high regard, as war with any one part of the faction means war with the entirety of the group due to their bond in arms. So far, two allied nations have been documented to be part of the Loss. The Loss uh, Sons. Who are the Lost Sons? The Lost Sons are an ancient culture of North American and peoples. They are suspected to be the first faction of the Loss. The Lost Sons are made up of North American civilizations such as the Mayans, the Inca Empire, and some Native American tribes, like the Sioux. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. However, some refuse to join the Lost due to differing cultural, cultural beliefs. They are among the earliest people to have discovered the backgrounds and are thought to be the oldest still 
still surviving group within the backrooms. They predate the MEG and other groups in the backrooms by centuries at least. Though the exact age is nearly impossible to tell. The initial tribes formed when the various groups and tribes presumably entered the backrooms at around the same time, eventually forming an alliance with each other with the end goal of returning these to the civilization they had lost. As time passed, they failed to find exit and began to live off the land, slowly indoctrinating other groups and individuals over the years in secrecy. For a long time, the Meg and other broader backwards communities were unaware of their existence as they kept primarily to themselves. In time, alliances would be made with the other community, using groups to work together in the backgrounds. However, the Lost Sons were considered the first true Lost Society. Lifestyles and Customs The Lost Sons live a largely nomadic lifestyle, splitting into groups and spreading throughout one level until eventually uniting after an often multi-day hunt has occurred. After this, they will consume their spoils and repeat the process in another location. They typically hunt in levels 1, 3, and 5, although are not opposed hunting in other levels given the choice. The lost outposts are initially set up when they first make it to a level, though it is not recommended to enter one of these outposts intentionally. If one wishes to join the lost sons, they must show a demonstration of physical prowess and a genuine desire to live like they do. The first and hardest step is finding a leader who will willingly oversee the wanderer's training. After this, they will usually assign some sort of hunting mission that can range from killing a skin stealer to making a journey to the hive. After this, you will have to learn the lost language and then go through one successful hunt with other lost members. Lists of individuals or tribes, the Lost Mayans, the Dynasty of the Suns, the Great Stones. Note that none of these subgroups have been confirmed, rather that they have been observed by individual reports across several levels. And the other er, er, nation within the Lost is the Lost Legion. The Lost Legion is a faction of the Lost formed by ancient Greek and Roman wanderers who had discovered the background during the Pyrrhic War period. They then formed a large survival group before deciding to team up with the Lost Sons. They decided to do this in spite of cultural differences as they believed the Lost Sons to be great warriors who could prove important allies. The Lost Legion still values hunting, however they do so more for the glory of battle than any kind of cultural or religious customs. They live a more sedentary lifestyle having outposts and other pocket civilizations throughout level 3 and 2, as these are the easiest locations to reach with the most number of quarry to hunt. The Lost Legion is much more hostile to outward interaction with the Lost Sons, and as such, very little information has been gathered about their culture. They also speak a language that has not been translated as thoroughly as the Lost Sons language has, and as such, interactions often lead to frustrations due to the language barrier. When the Lost Sons move to a level, the Lost Legion occupies during the Hunter Expedition, they will usually stay within one of the Lost Legion's outposts during the hunt rather than making a temporary one of their own. Lifestyle and Customs The Lost Legion lives a lifestyle similar to ancient Greek society, however they allow the worship of either Roman or Greek gods and find them mostly interchangeable. Well, for the most part they are. So they find that the Romans and Greeks were forced to work together to escape the backrooms at the beginning of their entry, and since then the two cultures have mostly formed into one cohesive group. The Lost Legion has been in war with various gr other groups in the past, however have never acted on these threats as it would involve the greater loss and hurt the reputation of the Lost Legion within the overall group. List of individual groups The Lost Legion uses a warrior-based group system in the event of war. Hunters and the general population do not form into tribes like the Lost Sons, the Bronze Elite, and Poseidon's Fury.
pages involving the lost would be the Yeoman, Gods of Grits, the Pantheon, Scarabax, Smiler Repellent, the Makina, level 149, Coconut Snares, Leo Caselos, and level 222. We might read this eventually. Anyway, now for Entity 189, the Inked Makina. Entity number 189, Habitats Extinct, formerly level 2. The Makina were an ancient species of partly cybernetic entities, which were loosely related to the loss. Due to circumstances which are as of yet unknown, this species went extinct about around 200 years ago. Evidence of their culture, interactions, societal behaviors, and subsequently their existence have been provided by the loss in other parties. What we know to be true about the Makina is actually quite little. They seem to have to be the most widely spread out race in the back rooms, previously to humans having mastered the art of no clipping and f to and from a var variety of levels. Their home, residing in level 2, have been slowly evolved from an animalistic species into the sentient and highly, and highly advanced cybernetic race that they were previous to their extinction. Ancient depiction of the Makina drawn by the loss. They look like a futuristic robot, actually. Dang. They made friendly contact with the loss early in the group, starting years, and they were, were known to trade resources and shared their knowledge about the backrooms with them. The creatures walk lightly and with elegance. They know much more about the place than we do, although they do not claim to hold such knowledge. They treat us kindly for now. As such, it is only just to deliver such kindness in return. I wonder, however, where the East Beings come from. They seem to be connected with these walls, almost as though they were a part of them before. Ancient Lost Tech Ek, on the Makina. Here's a variety of mechanisms that were used in the Makina that were used in their suits. Looks like gears. I'm not sure what that is. It's fairly interesting. Biology. The Makina were vaguely humanoid, but they include those themselves in large metallic suits, which they wore for the entirety of their lives. These suits had a bulky, elaborate design, and which utilized extremely advanced technology, which was not understood by anyone other than themselves. The species also wielded small, human-like patterns in to the front of their visors, so they could share similar appearance with the laws and not seem off-putting. I imagine that makes them seem more off-putting, because humans are actually designed with a slight fear of things that look human but aren't quite human. The true form of the Makina is incredibly unclear to modern historians. Any creature's culture, however, the species was not considered alive until they had been put into their suits, and so the pictures of their natural forms are exceedingly hard to come across as it was considered able to depict them and members of their society. The materials they would uh, use to create these suits were gathered from places like level 2, and they had almost swept the level clean of the rare resources which they used to create new cybernetic enhancements but towards the end of their arena of the back rooms. However, it is unknown whether or not these creatures were born naturally or manufactured in a more robotic sense. In general, the species house technology that was revolutionary for its time and especially hard to replicate even in the modern back rooms era. Their machinery may have been compatible with, to that seen in the front rooms, but much more alien in nature. It is also believed that the Makina used rudimentary forms of spears and pikes as weaponry when needed. All the species had been working on an early version of what could be considered a gun, this being a small pipe that could launch flaming projectiles, the species deemed it too resource heavy to bother using.
They had utilized a language that has yet to be translated into most languages by historians, but when the laws arrived, they did learn to communicate in a crude form of Latin. Their writing used heavy emphasis on markings and small symbols, not dissimilar to Egyptian hieroglyphs. Blon had has since offered to try and translate the language using the knowledge of level 906, having been familiar with the race. Culture. From what it seemed, the Makina had a culture completely defined in the backrooms. The race had never even been outside of the backrooms itself, having lived in the backrooms for the entirety of the time that they were active. As such, when the Lost began to speak of their time in the front rooms, they became increasingly fascinated with the concept of this other world, so to speak. Towards their disappearance, they had begun drawing large and, magnific and magnificent tapestries of what seemed to be their depictions of environments in the front rooms and would show this to newborn members of the species. Sometime around the lost arrival, the Makina had begun to experience resource or fatigue within level 2, which is the rise to have been a defining factor in the disappearance of the Makina. At their largest, the group could have had between 1,000 and 2,000 members. Towards the lost arrival, however, they began to drop into the hundreds. <sighs> they seem to believe that their offspring can only be created within the walls of the second area. They have uh, almost entirely relocated there, seeing its resources as almost second as almost sacred in nature. I have consulted with the chiefs of their tribes, and they have expressed doubt over the future of their loved ones. They simply are reproducing at too fast a rate, and have too low equipment to continue creating their machinery. Every third child dies, lacking a suit for it to inhabit. They have created such wonderful art and worlds with which we are lucky to visit, but at a steep cost. Perhaps this cost will be too much. It's a surviving drawing of the Great Answer, which is what we're going to be reading about. And it makes no sense. Or at least it's hard to depict what it is. The Great Answer. In the last months of their existence, they began to speak of something they called the Great Answer. Scholars have claimed that a solution had arrived, solving their wildest questions as to the nature of their existence which had gone unsolved for centuries. They said that this could rescue them from their recent famine and potentially give them enough resources to create more machinery for centuries. At one point, they even declined resources from the laws, believing the great answer would supply them. Soon, they began to draw art of figures descending from bulbs of light within level 2, reaching out to them in an almost biblical connotation. It is usually agreed upon between historians that before the Great Answer, the Mishkina had no universal religion or even any semi except it once. Only a small old time amount of time after faith of the Great Answer side spread, what did Mishkina disappear forever? It is believed that the knowledge of such a place like the front ribs was inherently contradictory to everything the species had known up until that point in their lives. Knowing that the background was simply an imitation of a free existing place seemed to cause a species wide existential hysteria, which may have led to such a willing acceptance of the great answer. It is unknown who or what started spreading the great answer or the exact nature of its knowledge, but it must have had detrimental effects to the species. Maybe, when you go to the back rooms, do not talk about the front rooms, aka the world where you come from as that will only a heart hurt residents of the backrooms. Disappearance and Impact 
The ruins left behind by the Makina are extremely scarce, but provide a wealth of understanding to their related to their history. So the of back rooms has continued to expand so the as the spirits of Makina's ruins remain hard to come by. To date, not a single intact settlement has been discovered. Here's some remnants of a Makina household. When compared to other major species in the back rooms, the Makina disappeared relatively quickly. Some theorize that the group died off as a result of their fleeing resources, unable to adapt to the changes in their environment. Other theorize that the great answer did in fact ascend to a higher level of being, perhaps even taking them to the front rooms itself. As someone who lives in the front rooms currently, I can tell you that there are no Makina. Either way, their sudden extinctions shocked the laws and caused the groups to have a non-intervention policy for years to come. Interview 1337 Interviewer Dr. Bayer Interviewee Alice of the of the Laws and I know I did not pronounce that correctly because I don't know how to pronounce their names. <sighs> so, are you ready to tell us about the Makina? I have not heard of them in a long time. What do you wish to know? We've heard from your other historians that they were fairly amicable. What was your personal experience with them? Alice smiles to himself. They were scholars. Artists, musicians, they created and instead of destroyed. There are times brighter minds than us, and yet they still knew so little of the world with which they inhabited. In time, however, this lack of knowledge consumed them. We came from another world, and it scared them beyond belief. They want answers, a god to believe in, some sort of creator to explain such horrors. And what they find? What was the great answer? They found one, I suppose. We never did get to see it ourselves. Still, they were good to us. And I wish them well, regardless of where they are now. Perhaps the thing we see in this world can... Perhaps the things we see in this world can scare us. Perhaps there truly is no answer to the nature of our life. My faith has been tested ever since I arrived here. For some... The only true answer is death itself. That was a lot of history for the backgrounds. All because of a level. What was it? If man is still alive. Yay, yeah, we got lost on a whole entire journey because I got a little bit curious about who the lost, the steel, and the machina were. I should do that more often. Anyway, if you like this video about four things, most of it being history, then please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. But maybe I'll be going into another half hour long on tangent about, about something completely unrelated to what I actually started the video based on. Until then, goodbye!